This is a recording of an article on Wikipedia and was recorded by user Popular Outcast. The material recorded is current as of the May 29, 2008 revision of the article. Fermi Paradox from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. This article is about Enrico Fermi's Paradox. For the music album, see Fermi Paradox album. The Fermi Paradox is the apparent contradiction between high estimates of the probability of the existence of extraterrestrial civilizations and the lack of evidence for, or contact with, such civilizations. The extreme age of the universe and its vast number of stars suggests that if the Earth is typical, extraterrestrial life should be common. Discussing this proposition with colleagues over lunch in 1950, the physicist Enrico Fermi asked, quote, Where are they? End quote. Fermi questioned why, if a multitude of advanced extraterrestrial civilizations exist in the Milky Way galaxy, evidence such as spacecraft or probes are not seen. A more detailed examination of the implications of the topic began with a paper by Michael H. Hart in 1975, and it is sometimes referred to as the Fermi-Hart Paradox. Another closely related question is the Great Silence. Even if travel is hard, if life is common, why don't we detect their radio transmissions? There have been attempts to resolve the Fermi paradox by locating evidence of extraterrestrial civilizations, along with proposals that such life could exist without human knowledge. Counter-arguments suggest that intelligent extraterrestrial life does not exist, or occurs so rarely that humans will never make contact with it. Starting with Hart, a great deal of effort has gone into developing scientific theories and possible models of extraterrestrial life and the Fermi Paradox have become a theoretical reference point in much of this work. The problem has spawned numerous scholarly works addressing it directly. While various questions that relate to it have been addressed in fields as diverse as astronomy, biology, ecology, and philosophy. The emerging field of astrobiology has brought an interdisciplinary approach to the Fermi Paradox and the question of extraterrestrial life. Following is a list of the contents of this article. Section 1, Basis of the Paradox. Section 2, Related Concepts. Section 2.1, Drake Equation and the Anthropic Principle. Section 3, Resolving the Paradox Empirically. Section 3.1, Radio Emissions. Section 3.2, Direct Planetary Observation. Section 3.3, Alien Constructs. Section 3.3.1 Probes, Colonies, and Other Artifacts Section 3.3.2 Advanced Stellar Scale Artifacts Section 4 Explaining the Paradox Theoretically Section 4.1 No Other Civilizations Currently Exist Section 4.1.1 No Other Civilizations Have Arisen Section 4.1.2 it is the nature of intelligent life to destroy itself. Section 4.1.3 It is the nature of intelligent life to destroy others. Section 4.1.4 .4. Human beings were created alone. Section 4.2 They do exist, but we see no evidence. Section 4.2.1 Communication is impossible due to problems of scale. Section 4.2.2 Communication is impossible for technical reasons. Section 4.2.3 They choose not to interact with us. Section 4.2.4 .4, They are here unobserved. Section 5 See also. Section 6 References. Section 7 Suggested reading. Section 8 External links. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, A Graphical Representation of the Arecibo Message, Humanity's First Attempt to Use Radio Waves to Actively Communicate Its Existence to Alien Civilizations. Section 1. Basis of the Paradox The Fermi Paradox is a conflict between an argument of scale and probability and a lack of evidence. 
A more complete definition could be stated thus. The size and age of the universe suggests that many technologically advanced extraterrestrial civilizations ought to exist. However, the hypothesis seems inconsistent with the lack of observational evidence to support it. The first aspect of the paradox, the argument by scale, is a function of the raw numbers involved. There are an estimated 250 billion stars in the Milky Way and 70 sextillion in the visible universe. Even if intelligent life occurs on only a minuscule percentage of planets around these stars, there should still be a great number of civilizations extant in the Milky Way galaxy alone. This argument also assumes the mediocrity principle, which states that Earth is not special but merely a typical planet, subject to the same laws, effects, and likely outcomes as any other world. Some estimates using the Drake equation support this argument, although the assumptions behind those calculations have themselves been challenged. The second cornerstone of the Fermi paradox is a rejoinder to the argument by scale. Given intelligent life's ability to overcome scarcity and its tendency to colonize new habitats, it seems likely that any advanced civilization would seek out new resources and colonize first their own star system and then the surrounding star systems. As there is no conclusive or certifiable evidence on Earth or elsewhere in the known universe of other intelligent life after 13.7 billion years of the universe's history, it may be assumed that intelligent life is rare or that our assumptions about the general behavior of intelligent species are flawed. The Fermi paradox can be asked in two ways. The first is, why are no aliens or other artifacts physically here? If interstellar travel is possible, even the slow kind nearly within the reach of Earth technology, then it would only take from 5 million to 50 million years to colonize the galaxy. This is a relatively small amount of time on a geological scale, let alone a cosmological one. Since there are many stars older than the Sun, or since intelligent life might have evolved earlier elsewhere, the question then becomes why the galaxy is not colonized already. Even if colonization is impractical or undesirable to all alien civilizations, large-scale exploration of the galaxy is still possible. The means of exploration and theoretical probes involved are discussed extensively below. However, no signs of colonization or exploration have been found. The argument above may not hold for the universe as a whole, since travel times may well explain the lack of physical presence on Earth of alien inhabitants of faraway galaxies. However, the question then becomes, why do we see no signs of intelligent life, as a sufficiently advanced civilization could potentially be seen over a significant fraction of the size of the observable universe? Even if such civilizations are rare, since they could be detected from far away, Many more potential sites for their origin are within our view. However, no signs of such civilizations have been detected. It is currently unclear which version of the paradox is stronger. Section 2. Related Concepts Section 2.1. Drake Equation and the Anthropic Principle Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia article titled Drake Equation and Anthropic Principle. While numerous theories and principles attend to the Fermi paradox, the two most closely related are the Drake Equation and the Anthropic Principle. The former was formulated by Dr. Frank Drake in 1960, a decade after the objections raised by Enrico Fermi, in an attempt to find a systematic means to evaluate the numerous probabilities involved in alien life. The speculative equation factors, the rate of star formation in the galaxy, the number of stars with planets and the number that are habitable, the number of those planets which develop life and subsequently intelligent communicating life, and finally the expected lifetimes of such civilizations. The fundamental problem is that the last four terms, fraction of planets with life, odds life becomes intelligent, odds intelligent life becomes communicative, and lifetime of communicating civilizations are completely unknown. We have only one example rendering statistical estimates impossible, and even the example we have is subject to strong anthropic bias. 
The Drake equation has been used by both optimists and pessimists with widely differing results. Dr. Carl Sagan, using optimistic numbers, suggested as many as one million communicating civilizations in the Milky Way in 1966, though he later suggested that the number could be far smaller. Skeptics, such as Frank Tipler, have put it in pessimistic numbers and concluded that the average number of civilizations in a galaxy is much less than one. Note that even though there is at least one civilization in our galaxy, the average or most likely number of civilizations in our galaxy, as described by this equation, may still be smaller than one. In other words, the fact that there is at least one civilization in our galaxy doesn't mean that this was a likely outcome. This is an excellent example of anthropic bias. No civilization can use itself to estimate the average number of civilizations in a galaxy, since if there was not at least one civilization, the question could not arise. Frank Drake himself has commented that the Drake equation is unlikely to settle the Fermi paradox. Instead, it is just a way of organizing our ignorance on the subject. Section 3. Resolving the Paradox Empirically One obvious way to resolve the Fermi paradox would be to find conclusive evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. Various efforts to find such evidence have been made since 1960, and several are ongoing. As human beings do not have interstellar travel capability, such searches are being carried out at great distances and rely on careful analysis of very subtle evidence. This limits possible discoveries to civilizations which alter their environment in a detectable way or produce effects that are detectable at a distance, such as radio emissions. Non-technological civilizations are very unlikely to be detectable from Earth in the near future. One difficulty in searching is avoiding an overly anthropocentric viewpoint. Conjecture on the type of evidence likely to be found often focuses on the types of activities that humans have performed, or likely would perform given more advanced technology. Intelligent aliens might avoid these expected activities, or perform activities totally novel to humans. Section 3.1 Radio Emissions Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main articles titled SETI, Project Ozma, Project Phoenix SETI, Serendip, and Allen Telescope Array. Radio technology and the ability to construct a radio telescope are presumed to be a natural advance for technological species, theoretically creating effects that might be detected over interstellar distances. Sensitive observers of the solar system, for example, would note unusually intense radio waves for a G2 star due to Earth's television and telecommunication broadcasts. In the absence of an apparent natural cause, alien observers might infer the existence of terrestrial civilization. Therefore, the careful searching of radio emissions from space for non-natural signals may lead to the detection of alien civilizations. Such signals could be either accidental, byproducts of civilization, or deliberate attempts to communicate, such as the communication with extraterrestrial intelligence's Arecibo message. A number of astronomers and observatories have attempted and are attempting to detect such evidence, mostly through the SETI organization, although other approaches such as optical SETI also exist. Several decades of SETI analysis have not revealed any main sequence stars with unusually bright or meaningfully repetitive radio emissions, although there have been several candidate signals. On August 15, 1977, the WOW signal was picked up by the Big Ear Radio Telescope. However, the Big Ear only looks at each point on the sky for 72 seconds, and re-examinations of the same spot have found nothing. In 2003, radio source SHG B02 plus 14A was isolated by SETI at home analysis, although it has largely been discounted by further study. There are numerous technical assumptions underlying SETI that may cause human beings to miss radio emissions with present search techniques. These are discussed below. Section 3.2 Direct Planetary Observation Detection and classification of exoplanets has come out of recent refinements in mainstream astronomical instruments and analysis. 
While this is a new field in astronomy, the first published paper claiming to have discovered an exoplanet was released in 1989, it is possible that planets which are likely to be able to support life will be found in the near future. Direct evidence for the existence of life may eventually be observable, such as the detection of biotic signature gases, such as methane and oxygen, or even the industrial air pollution of a technologically advanced civilization in an exoplanet's atmosphere by means of spectrographic analysis. With improvements in our observational capabilities, it may eventually even be possible to detect direct evidence such as that which humanity produces. However, exoplanets are rarely directly observed. The first claim to have done so was made in 2004. Rather, their existence is usually inferred from the effects they have on the stars they orbit. This means that usually only the mass and orbit of an exoplanet can be deduced. This information, along with the stellar classification of its sun and educated guesses as to its composition, usually based on the mass of the planet and its distance from its sun, allow for rough approximations of the planetary environment. The current methods for exoplanet detection are not likely to detect life-bearing Earth-like worlds. Methods such as gravitational microlensing can detect the presence of small worlds, potentially even smaller than the Earth, but can only detect such worlds for very brief moments of time, and no follow-up is possible. Other methods, such as radial velocity and astrometry, allow prolonged observations of exoplanet effects, but only work with worlds that are many times the mass of Earth. These seem unlikely candidates to harbor Earth-like life. However, exoplanet detection and classification is a very active subdiscipline in astronomy, with 241 such planets being detected between 1988 and 2007, and the first possibly terrestrial planet discovered within a star's habitable zone being found in 2007. It is hoped that refinements in exoplanet detection methods will lead to increased detection and prolonged observation of terrestrial planets. Such observational refinements would allow us to better gauge how common potentially inhabitable worlds are and thus allow us a much better idea of how common life in the universe might be, which of course has a profound influence over the expectations behind the Fermi paradox itself. This section of the article has an image with the caption, A Composite Picture of Earth at Night, Human Civilization is Detectable from Space. Section 3.3 .3, Alien Constructs Section 3.3.1 Probes, Colonies, and Other Artifacts Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main articles titled Von Neumann Probe and Bracewell Probe. As noted, given the size and age of the universe and the relative rapidity at which dispersion of intelligent life can occur, Evidence of alien colonization attempts might plausibly be discovered. Also, evidence of exploration not containing extraterrestrial life, such as probes and information gathering devices, may await discovery. Some theoretical exploration techniques, such as the von Neumann probe, could exhaustively explore a galaxy the size of the Milky Way in as little as half a million years, with relatively little investment in materials and energy relative to the results. If even a single civilization in the Milky Way attempted this, such probes could spread throughout the entire galaxy. Evidence of such probes might be found in the solar system, perhaps in the asteroid belt where raw materials would be plentiful and easily accessed. Another possibility for contact with an alien probe, one that would be trying to find human beings, is an alien bracewell probe. Such a device would be an autonomous space probe whose purpose is to seek out and communicate with alien civilizations, as opposed to von Neumann probes, which are usually described as purely exploratory. These were proposed as an alternative to carrying a slow speed-of-light dialogue between vastly distant neighbors. Rather than contending with the long delays a radio dialogue would suffer, a probe housing an artificial intelligence would seek out an alien civilization to carry on a close-range communication with the discovered civilization. The findings of such a probe would still have to be transmitted to the home civilization at light speed, but an information-gathering dialogue could be conducted in real time. 
Since the 1950s, direct exploration has been carried out on a small fraction of the solar system and no evidence that it has ever been visited by alien colonists or probes has been uncovered. Detailed exploration of areas of the solar system where resources would be plentiful, such as asteroids, the Kuiper Belt, the Oort Cloud, and the various planetary ring systems, may yet produce evidence of alien exploration, though these regions are vast and difficult to investigate. There have been preliminary efforts in this direction in the form of the SETA and SET-V projects to search for extraterrestrial artifacts or other evidence of extraterrestrial visitation within the solar system. There have also been attempts to signal, attract, or activate Bracewell probes in Earth's local vicinity, including by scientists Robert Freitas and Francisco Valdez. Many of the projects that fall under this umbrella are considered fringe science by astronomers, and none of the various projects have located any artifacts. Should alien artifacts be discovered even here on Earth, they may not be recognizable as such. The products of an alien mine and an advanced alien technology may not be perceptible or recognizable as artificial constructs. Exploratory devices in the form of bioengineered life forms created through synthetic biology would presumably disintegrate after a point, leaving no evidence. An alien information gathering system based on molecular nanotechnology could be all around us at this very moment, completely undetected. Clark's third law suggests that an alien civilization well in advance of humanities might have means of investigation that are not yet conceivable to human beings. Section 3.3.2 Advanced Stellar Scale Artifacts Detailed information about this section can be found in the Wikipedia main articles titled Dyson Spear, Kardashev Scale, Alderson Disk, Matryoshka Brain, and stellar engine. In 1959, Dr. Freeman Dyson observed that every developing human civilization constantly increases its energy consumption, and theoretically, a civilization of sufficient age would require all the energy produced by its sun. The Dyson sphere was the thought experiment that he derived as a solution, a shell or cloud of objects enclosing a star to harness as much radiant energy as possible. Such a feat of astroengineering would drastically alter the observed spectrum of the sun, changing it at least partly from the normal emission lines of a natural stellar atmosphere to that of a black body radiation, probably with a peak in the infrared. Dyson himself speculated that advanced alien civilization might be detected by examining the spectra of stars, searching for such an altered spectrum. Since then, several other theoretical stellar-scale megastructures have been proposed, but the central idea remains that a highly advanced civilization, type 2 or greater on the Kardashev scale, could alter its environment enough as to be detectable from interstellar distances. However, such constructs may be more difficult to detect than originally thought. Dyson spheres might have different emission spectra depending on the desired internal environment. Life based on high temperature reactions may require a high temperature environment with resulting waste radiation in the visible spectrum, not the infrared. Additionally, a variant of the Dyson sphere has been proposed which would be difficult to observe from any great distance. A Matryoshka brain is a series of concentric spheres, each radiating less energy per area than its inner neighbor. The outermost sphere of such a structure could be close to the temperature of the interstellar background radiation and thus be all but invisible. There have been some preliminary attempts to find evidence of the existence of Dyson spheres or other large type 2 or type 3 Kardashev scale artifacts that would alter the spectra of their core stars, but optical surveys have not located anything. Fermilab has an ongoing program to find Dyson spheres, but such searches are preliminary and incomplete as yet. An image accompanies this section of the article with a caption, A variant of the speculative Dyson sphere. Such large-scale artifacts would drastically alter the spectrum of a star.